In this training video, we will cover the dashboards feature of Insights and learn how it works. Dashboards are great for those that are looking for more traditional reporting tools that will allow the business to configure the way Insights metrics are viewed. It is a very easy way to create a report without a lot of heavy lifting on the business's behalf. To access dashboards, we need to log into the Insights app from a computer. Dashboards will not show up in the mobile app. Once logged in, we will land on dashboards. Once here, we will look to the bottom of the dashboards page for the navigation bar. Putting this at the bottom was done intentionally to declutter the top of this page once it is embedded into Booker and MindBody. On the left are a couple of management options. Click on the plus to create a new dashboard. This icon here is the dashboards menu. Click on it to view the main menu of options for dashboards. From here, we can create a new dashboard, open an existing one by checking it off from the list of dashboards in the account, and any dashboards that are checked off are open and we will see the tabs for open ones to the right of the dashboards menu at the bottom. If we wanted to close one of these, uncheck it from here to do so. This menu will also list the open dashboards below this line. Also in this menu, we can choose to close all the dashboards that are open or switch to any open one using this list. We can also switch to an open dashboard by clicking on the tabs at the bottom. Let's click one of these tabs to view a dashboard. Click on the arrow on the tab to see a menu of options for that dashboard. Let's go through these options. Design allows the user to edit the dashboard, such as configuring the data and moving charts around on the dashboard. Duplicate allows the user to create a copy of that dashboard. This is useful if a business wants to build off an existing dashboard without changing it. Share allows users to share this with others based on their insights role or user type. The customer support role will enable MindBody employees like Sam's and Tam's to collaborate on a dashboard before showing it to a customer. Once we check off a user, we can also click on the pencil icon to prevent this user from editing the dashboard, making it view only. When the pencil icon is red, that means this is view only for that role when they're looking at the dashboard and they won't be able to actually make changes to it which can be good if we just want to get feedback from one of these other roles. For example, if Sam's and Tam's are working on a dashboard together, they may want to share it with the business to confirm that the team is moving in the right direction without letting the business make changes to it yet. And then if we do have customer support or another role checked off, it's going to show you the names of those users in the list here. And then we would click share and that would share it with those users. The next option in the menu is export, which allows users to export the dashboard to Excel or a CSV file. The PDF export option is coming, but it's grayed out right now. The last option is close, which will close the dashboard and it will no longer appear in the navigation bar. There isn't a common dashboard that all accounts start off with but users can configure the insights metrics how they would like in a dashboard. And as more customers use this, we will start to see an interesting variety of dashboards. Many might even replicate the existing reports in MindBody and Booker simply because here in dashboards, it's a more understandable user interface. This business wants to create a new dashboard that will show an overview of different metrics for services, products, customers, and employees. To create a new dashboard, click on the plus icon. This automatically brings us into design mode, which changes the background color to a light blue, so we always have that visual cue that we are in design mode. We can also jump in and out of design mode just by pressing D on the keyboard. And any changes that we make in design mode will automatically be saved as a draft. You can see the last time the draft was saved in the top right. 
This is great if we need to leave this area of insights or log out as it leaves the dashboard as a work in progress. Just keep in mind that any changes to a dashboard won't be seen in the regular viewing mode until it is published. On a new dashboard, we will start off with this row with four chart blocks with plus signs and each block can show a different metric. It can even show the same metric, but in a different chart view and by different data groupings. Now, the very first thing that we want to do with the new dashboard is give it a name. Otherwise, it will just be untitled number one, number two, and so on. This will be named Business Overview. A description of the dashboard can be added in the field below. This will be seen by those viewing the dashboard, and it is an excellent way to inform others what this dashboard is reporting on. This dashboard is going to be an overview of all the items that the business sells, the employees and their sales numbers, and also the clients and what they're doing. There will be a lot to add because of what the business wants to include. To add a chart, click on the plus in one of the blocks to start the process. First, name the chart, which is employees for this example. And one fun tip, on Windows, hit the Windows key plus the semicolon and an emoji menu pops up to use. This is a pro move and should be encouraged to help the people at a company add some fun to the dashboards as well as create some visual information. We will use people emoji to represent employees. Click the arrow at the top right to move on. Or when we need to go back to the previous step, we can use the arrow at the top left. Next, from the options that appear, click on the chart type we want to use for this chart, which will be a pie chart. Pie charts are a simpler setup than some of the other charts that can be used. Click the arrow at the top right to move on. Here we will choose a data set from the dropdown. These options allow users to filter the data for this chart by location, employee, customer, product, or service. We will choose employee. Since we're using the employee data set, many of the filters in the rest of this chart setup will be specific to employee metrics. And the same goes for the other data sets that can be chosen in this step. Click the arrow at the top right to move on. Here we can add a metric from the drop down checklist for the chart. And for this example, we will choose service sales net. Pie charts can only display one metric, but the number of metrics that we are able to add here will vary based on the chart type that is chosen in the previous step. We can also group this data, which is optional for the pie chart, but we can group data by location or employee. Grouping data is a somewhat technical act that takes similar results and lists them under one name, and that will just determine how we're seeing the information. I will group this by employee. Click the arrow at the top right to move on. Here we have the option to lock this chart. When a chart is locked, it means that once the dashboard is published, the chart will remain locked in its current state and it will not change when the dashboard filters are changed while viewing. This can be helpful if a business wants to see one static metric on the dashboard. We can also filter out the data by locations and employees using the dropdown, but we will keep this grouped all together. Click the arrow at the top right to move on. Click Create to finish. And here we can see the chart that was just created. As we hover over the different charts in design mode, a blue outline and some dots appear that will give us a couple of ways to edit. Click on the three dots in the top right of a chart to edit and go through the setup steps again or delete the chart. The dots on the side mean that we can resize this chart to be bigger or smaller. There may be times when these dots don't appear and that is because there is no way to resize it based on the placement of the chart on the dashboard. Hover over a dot in the chart and two arrows appear. The arrows give the option to make it larger or smaller. If an arrow is grayed out, like this one, it is disabled because the chart cannot be moved in that direction. Click on the active arrow to make this chart larger by extending it into the block next to it. 
Now, when we hover over the chart again, more dots appear since there are more ways to change the size of the chart. To move a chart over a block, hover over the dot in the center and arrows will appear when we can move a chart over to the right, left, up or down. Moving a chart can only be done if there are open blocks around it. Since this is the only open block next to the chart, it can only be moved over to the right. This is also why the right arrow is the only one appearing here. We will click on the right arrow to move it over. We can also use the arrow keys plus shift or control to resize the charts. The arrow keys when used alone will move the chart over to an available space. If we hover over the center blue dot on the chart again, we will see another arrow has appeared since there is now an open block next to it. Pie charts usually work pretty well in one block, but it depends on how much data is showing in there. There are, however, some of these charts that definitely fit better in more than one block, depending on how much data there is to see. Let's add the next chart for this business overview dashboard, following the same steps as before. Click on the plus in one of the blocks. First, name the chart, which is products for this example. And don't forget about adding a fun little emoji there. Click the arrow at the top right to move on. Next, click on the chart type, which will be a table. The table chart will have the most involved setup of any of these charts that we can configure on dashboards. Click the arrow at the top right to move on. Then choose the data set from the dropdown. We will choose product. Click the arrow at the top right to move on. Here we can add up to 30 metrics from the dropdown checklist for the table chart. This demo account only has a few to choose from though, and we will check off product sales net and average ticket. Users can enable the option to show the grand totals for all of the data being shown in this chart. For table charts, it is required to choose group data and supporting info. We will group by all of these. Supporting info will show the same data sets as above. This just ensures that if we group on location, for example, we also choose location as a row label. It helps to think about these supporting info options as metadata to the rows in the table. For example, if a business wants to see four different KPIs for product sales, it's beneficial to see not only the product name, but also the brand. Brand and product name are metadata points, and by adding these both to the same chart, viewers will be able to see these side by side. These varied views provide quite a different setup of dashboards depending on what a customer is hoping to uncover about the business. Click the arrow at the top right to move on. We will leave this unlocked, and below that is the option to filter out the data shown. For this example, we're going to leave these as they are but if the business only wants to see a specific brand, that can be set up here. And just as a reminder, these brands, categories, and subcategories are all pulled over from the Booker or MindBody account. Click the arrow at the top right to move on to the final step. Click Create to finish. And here is the chart. Table charts will show all the data more easily when it is resized into multiple blocks. Some of the options that show up on a chart in design mode, like the search icon, are only active when viewing a dashboard. There are still a couple of charts to add before this business is ready to publish the dashboard, but we are running low on empty chart blocks. We can add more charts by adding another row to the dashboard. Hover over the right side of a row to see the menu icons. The three dots allow us to add or delete a row. Let's add another row. Back in the row menu, we can turn on or off the four chart layout, which will show three blocks instead of four. The six dots allow us to click and drag rows up and down the page if we want to see the rows in a certain order. Let's use a little movie magic to quickly create a couple other charts for this dashboard.
Once all the charts have been created for a dashboard, we can change the size of the chart blocks and move the charts around until everything is placed just the way the business would like. And if there are blank blocks still, that is okay. They cannot be deleted from the dashboard and we can leave them blank. Even though we can see these in design mode, they won't show up when we are viewing the dashboard live. Once all the charts have been created for a dashboard and we are ready to set this dashboard live, or if we just want to keep this as a draft and leave design mode, click on the main dashboard menu at the bottom. Click publish to push any changes live in the system. Once published, this will be timestamped at the top right above the last time the draft was saved. It lets us know the last time this was published as well. It's also not going to let us publish it again until changes are made. Now notice it hasn't taken us out of design mode yet. It has only published the dashboard. Click restore to discard any changes made in design mode and go back to the last published version of the dashboard. Click delete to delete this dashboard from insights completely. This is a final action in the system and cannot be undone. Click clear all visuals to clear all the chart blocks in the dashboard for a fresh start. And click exit design mode to stop editing and go to the published dashboard view. We can also press the D on the keyboard to exit design mode. Now we can see the end user view. Keep in mind that what a user sees in dashboards will depend on their user type. There is a set of filters that can be used when viewing a dashboard. Click on the arrow on the left of the screen to open the filters panel. The dashboard will update in real time as the filters change. This can help users zero in on some of the data. Being able to compare locations for multi-location businesses is another benefit of these filters. It can give the business a chance to see how well they are doing with just a few locations. Below the filters is where we can set the date range to view the dashboard by. Click on the calendar icon and choose from one of the quick range options, including custom. On the dashboard itself, in view mode, there are a lot of ways to interact with the data. When we hover over one of the charts, we can begin to interact with it. For table charts, we can sort these by clicking the column titles, view more data by scrolling up, down, left and right, by choosing how many rows show per page, or by using the arrows at the bottom right of the table to view the next page of data. We can search for data in the table with the magnifying glass in the top right. Click on the three dots in the top right of any chart for the options to view this chart in full screen or export it. Whether exporting an individual chart or entire dashboard, the steps will be the same once we click on export. We can hover over other charts to view more details about the data being shown in them. Once a dashboard is published and ready to go, the business can use the filters to narrow down the results that are shown. That's it for this training video. Thanks for watching.